The Mount St. Helens Volcano Alert System has just detected a significant increase in activity, leaving everyone on edge. This unsettling surge has many questioning the volcano's stability and the potential for a major eruption in the near future. What is behind this dramatic increase? And are we on the verge of another catastrophic event? Let's explore the details and uncover the hidden threats that might be lurking beneath Mount St. Helens. The recent alert comes after a sudden and significant spike in seismic activity in the region since the beginning of June. Mount St. Helens has experienced a sharp rise in the number of earthquakes, causing widespread concern among scientists and officials. The frequency and intensity of these tremors have raised fears about the potential for a major volcanic eruption. The surge on seismic activity began in early June with a series of small earthquakes recorded around the volcano. Initially, these quakes were not deemed unusual as Mount St. Helens is known for its frequent seismic activity. However, as the days passed, the number and intensity of the earthquakes increased dramatically. By mid-June, the area was experiencing dozens of tremors each week, some strong enough to be felt by residents. This volcano usually experiences around 11 minor earthquakes per week, but recently this number has skyrocketed to around 35 per week. The U.S. Geological Survey has been closely monitoring this surge in earthquakes. According to their findings, these quakes are being caused by magma moving beneath the volcano. Magma movement is a key indicator of volcanic activity and its presence beneath Mount St. Helens suggests that the volcano is experiencing a significant period of unrest. Studies suggest that magma is moving into the volcano's shallow magma chamber which is located about 2.2 to 4.3 miles below the surface. This movement is likely the cause of the increased earthquake rate. Episodes of similar unrest have occurred at Mount St. Helens approximately every 5.5 years. These episodes of increased seismic activity are not uncommon for Mount St. Helens. But what we're seeing now is the most significant activity in the past 10 months, but it doesn't necessarily mean that an eruption is imminent. Still, it's important to continue monitoring the situation due to the unpredictability of volcanoes. To understand the current situation, it's crucial to look into the dynamics of the magma chamber beneath the volcano. The magma chamber is where magma accumulates over time. Magma from deep within the earth moves into this chamber, causing it to refill. This process is known as magma recharging. The current increase in earthquake activity is a direct result of magma moving into this chamber. When magma moves, it fractures the surrounding rock causing earthquakes. This movement is a clear indication that the volcano is experiencing a period of unrest. Despite this, scientists say the magma is still too deep to pose an immediate threat. The magma chamber is recharging, but the magma is currently at a depth where it's not likely to reach the surface anytime soon. Episodes of similar unrest have occurred at Mount St. Helens. These episodes involved increased earthquake activity and magma movement, but they did not always result in an eruption. Certainly Mount St. Helens has a history of episodic unrest. For instance, between 2004 and 2008, the volcano experienced a series of eruptions. These eruptions were preceded by increased seismic activity and ground deformation similar to what we are seeing now. However, not every episode of unrest leads to an eruption. In many cases, the magma moves into the chamber, causes some earthquakes, and then stabilizes without reaching the surface. So how does the current situation compare to past events? Mount St. Helens, located in Washington State, is known for its catastrophic eruption in 1980. This eruption is one of the most significant volcanic events in U.S. history and provides crucial context for understanding the current seismic activity. On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted violently after two months of increasing seismic activity and steam venting. The initial trigger was a magnitude 5.1 earthquake beneath the volcano, which caused a massive landslide. This landslide, the largest in recorded history removed the northern flank of the mountain and released the pressure within the magma chamber. 
The sudden drop in pressure led to a lateral blast sending a plume of ash and gas 15 miles into the atmosphere. The impact of the eruption was devastating. The lateral blast leveled 230 miles of forest, killed 57 people, and caused over a billion dollars in damage. Ash from the eruption spread across 11 states disrupting air travel and affecting thousands of lives. The eruption also created a new horseshoe-shaped crater in the volcano and significantly altered the landscape. Following the 1980 eruption, Mount St. Helens entered a period of intermittent activity. Looking further back, Mount St. Helens has a long history of volcanic activity. Over the past 1,000 years, it has been the most active volcano in the lower 48 U.S. states. The volcano has erupted numerous times with significant events occurring in the late 1400s, early 1800s, and of course 1980. The late 1400s saw a series of explosive eruptions that deposited thick layers of ash over a wide area. These eruptions were followed by a period of relative quiescence until the early 1800s when the volcano again became active. The early 1800s eruptions were similar in nature to the 1980 eruption, involving significant pyroclastic flows. But why is this important? One of the key patterns observed in Mount St. Helens activity is the occurrence of eruptive periods separated by intervals of dormancy. These periods of activity typically last several decades to centuries, during which the volcano can experience multiple eruptions. The current period of activity which began around 1980 is likely part of a longer-term cycle that has been ongoing for millennia. The current seismic activity must be viewed within this historical context. Therefore, understanding the long-term patterns of Mount St. Helens helps scientists to better interpret the current data and assess the potential risks. The catastrophic eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 has become a remarkable case study in ecological recovery and resilience. The eruption's immediate impact was devastating, but the landscape's recovery has been surprisingly rapid and robust, offering valuable insights into ecological processes. Immediately following the eruption, the area around Mount St. Helens resembled a moonscape with vast expanses of gray ash and fallen trees. Life seemed obliterated, however within just a few years, signs of recovery began to appear. Plants started to colonize the barren landscape, and animal species returned, marking the beginning of an ecological resurgence, one of the most notable examples of recovery. Lupins were among the first to establish themselves in the ash-covered terrain. These plants played a crucial role in stabilizing the soil and creating conditions conducive to the growth of other species. Over time, a diverse array of flora re-established itself, transforming the once desolate landscape into a thriving ecosystem. Then small mammals, insects, and birds began to repopulate the area, followed by larger animals like elk and deer. This recovery has provided scientists with a unique opportunity to study the resilience of ecosystems in the face of catastrophic disturbances. Ongoing research at Mount St. Helens continues to uncover fascinating insights into the dynamics of ecological recovery. One of the focal points of this research is Spirit Lake, which was dramatically altered by the eruption. The landslide that accompanied the eruption filled the lake with debris, raising its bed and drastically changing its ecosystem. Researchers have been particularly interested in the rapid pace at which life returned to Spirit Lake within a few years of the eruption. Bacteria and microbes began to colonize the lake followed by plankton, insects, and eventually fish. The lake's ecosystem has rebounded in unexpected ways with certain species thriving in the new conditions. A notable mystery involves the rainbow trout population in Spirit Lake. These fish have grown remarkably large three times faster than their counterparts in other lakes. However, they also die young with most not living beyond five years. This anomaly continues to puzzle scientists who are investigating the underlying causes. While the current activity at Mount St. Helens does not indicate an imminent eruption, it underscores the dynamic nature of the volcano and the importance of continuous monitoring and research. 
The U.S. Geological Survey has implemented a range of monitoring techniques to keep a close watch on Mount St. Helens. These include seismic sensors, ground deformation measurements, and gas emission analysis. The data collected from these methods provides a comprehensive picture of what is happening beneath the surface. One of the most telling signs of volcanic unrest is ground deformation. When magma moves into a volcano's magma chamber, it can cause the ground above to swell. However, according to scientists, there has been no significant ground deformation observed at Mount St. Helens. In addition, scientists also monitor gas emissions from the volcano. Changes in the levels of gases like carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide can indicate that magma is moving closer to the surface. So far, there have been no significant changes in gas emissions at Mount St. Helens. While the increased seismic activity is certainly noteworthy, experts agree that it does not currently pose a significant threat. The situation at Mount St. Helens underscores the importance of continuous monitoring and research. By keeping a close watch on the volcano's activity, scientists can better understand the processes at work and provide timely warnings if the situation changes.